My name is Sam Ace. Join me on my journey as I create space for conversations with some of Africa's finest individuals, those who are shifting the needle through the work that they do. We shine a spotlight on people who are making a positive impact in our society. This is the new generation of business leaders, philanthropists, social entrepreneurs, influencers, artists, the list goes on. On this show, you will hear their stories, how they gained their success, what challenges they faced, and what lessons they have learned. This is Impact Africa with Sam Ace. and welcome to Impact Africa. My name is Sam Ace and thank you so much for tuning in. In today's episode, we are so excited to be in conversation with the son of the soil, Mbongeni Butelezi. Born in rural KwaZulu-Natal, raised in springs and exhibits to the world, Butelezi has molded these very different worlds together and expresses some of his childhood memories through his art. Butelezi has developed a unique technique by using discarded plastic or plastic waste, and he calls this plastic collage. We'll be talking about Butelezi's journey as an artist and his passion for leading the young generation and preserving our environment. Butelezi, welcome to Impact Africa. I'm so honored to have you here, and thank you so much for your time today. How are you? I'm well, thanks, and how are you? And thank you for inviting me. <laughs> great, great. So, Butelezi, you've been in Durban for a few days, exhibiting some of your work and launching a, a new collection at the Pencil Club with the Pencil Art Foundation. And I actually had the privilege of watching you put this beautiful piece together using your technique. How has the exhibition gone for you? Well, look, I mean, the, um, maybe I, I need to start by um, thanking the Pencil Club um, uh, and the Pencil Art Foundation, you know, for inviting me. Um, you know, to come here to uh, and share some of my experiences, um, uh, you know, with, with people around here, down in KZN. It's a, it's a great honor, I must say. That's amazing. And how did it, did it go for you? I mean, watching you um, use your heat, your heat gun and, and blasting the, the plastic onto this canvas was such an amazing experience. Um, so how, how did the exhibition go? And I know that later in the week you had some people come and, and have a similar experience during the day. How did that go for you? Look, I mean, this, this is not something um, that happens every day to me. Um, you know, I'm usually hiding in my studio, uh, you know, doing my work. But, you know, the opportunity that has been provided to me um, by the Pencil Club and, uh, and Michelle Davidson, you know, for that matter, you know, played a huge role in making sure, you know, that this thing happens. You know, otherwise, you know, we as artists, we usually don't have uh, enough time to allow people to, to see us making our work. So for me, you know, to have this opportunity, um, it's, it's honestly a great honor. It is a great honor, I must say. So tell us more about this form of painting, the process that you go through and what you call it. Well, you know, at first I used to call my, uh, my technique plastic, uh, fantastic technique at first. But, uh, you know, later on I realized that, you know, if people get, you know, a bit confused. Then I, I, I called it for what it is, you know, it, it's plastic collage. Um, it's a fairly long process, uh, if one were to put it that way, because I start with uh, a wooden frame. I prepare a wooden frame and I cover or a wrap uh, um, uh, a roofing plastic around the frame. Uh, and I make it a point that it's four layers of roofing plastic, you know, so that it becomes stable uh, for me to be able to get the surface where I can start collaging with uh, other different colors on top of it. Um, and then from there, you know, the image builds up um, up to a point where it becomes uh, what it is, you know, um, a collage mm. uh, on plastic. Though. And, and where do you get the, the surface, like the, the base? Do you have that specially made or do you do, is it waste? It's 
as well, as, as well as the plastic that you use? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I find plastic everywhere. I think one is very fortunate. I mean, if you come to think of all these construction companies, I mean, when they uh, build these huge buildings, there's a lot of waste plastic there, you know, that could be used for other things. But, um, you know, sometimes I cannot wait for them, you know, to offer me plastics. I mean, I sometimes go out and make sure that, um, you know, I, I source it, you know, wherever I can find it. But I try to avoid buying you know, because it actually takes out the whole concept, you know, of recycling. Wow. And and then w once you're done with it, it's a it's a full piece of art and it's costed. It hasn't costed you much. Most definitely. And I think, you know, if, if we can all realize that, you know, sometimes um, uh, good art doesn't necessarily come from expensive materials, you know, you don't need expensive paints, brushes, and, and all of that. It is all about how you bring different ideas together, you know, and just make sense out of it. Then it becomes good art at the end of the day. And I think this is where we somehow miss it um, at some point. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think so too. But, you know, it must have taken you years to, to get to this part. Sometime during our conversation, I'd love you know, to talk about, you know, your journey to okay. this point. But before we get to that, tell me, after you finished your studies, you mm -hmm. went on to study mm -hmm. teaching yes. at the Johannesburg Arts Foundation. Yes. And I, I, I think that you're still quite the teacher because I, I see you um, sharing your skill in teaching the young upcoming artist. And, um, and you want to share your talent, you genuinely want to share your talent with others. Why is it important for you um, to share your skill and your talent with, with young upcoming artists? Look, I, I'm a passionate person um, and, and I also like to share. Um, you know, I believe that I cannot be the only person who does what I'm doing. Because, you know, eventually that will mean that when I die, it also dies. Um, I'm trying to avoid that situation as much as I possibly can. Even though, you know, I know it's very difficult to actually convince um, young artists, you know, to take up what I'm doing. I mean, I taught art for five years at Funda Center. And I remember well, you know, um, as I was teaching, because I was teaching painting, drawing, and sometimes uh, printmaking. You know, it was difficult for me to explain to students that look um, don't only focus on going out there and spend money on anything that you will be able to bring it back and, 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 and make art out of it you know try to think different try to see what could what what could possibly happen if you pick up something and 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 transform it you know into something that you know that uh, that is more um, artistic more than anything else, you know. And students, being students, you know, they, 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 they will tell you straight that, look, I can afford to buy my paints, I can afford to buy my canvases, so I think you as a, as a teacher, teach me how to paint, not um, to go out there and collect rubbish. So I think, you know, those are the things that really put me in a slightly awkward position, you know, where I, I honestly thought that, look, maybe I need to do what I'm supposed to be doing here, to teach art, um, but not necessarily forcing people to go out and think the way I do. Incredible. So you're really passionate about young people and about, about seeing them su being successful as upcoming artists. Do you see a bit of yourself in them? Maybe when you were younger, um, I, I, as a, a person who was aspiring to be an artist, do you see a bit of yourself in them? Yes, yes. I, I you know, they are, you know, each time when I think of uh, my struggles and the journey that I've been through, you know, I, I see myself as, as one of them, you know, and they actually don't realize that at some point I was where they are. You know, and, um, you know, but a young person will never realize that, you know, that look, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I, I, I meet someone who is willing to teach me ways of survival. You know, I mean, I think that's the best way to describe it. You know, it's a, it's a way of trying to make ends meet, you know, instead of um, uh, relying on, 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 on money that at times we don't have. Um, but like I said, that, you know, students being students, you know, they will tell you straight that, look, you can't stop me from doing what I came here for, you know. Um, so, I mean, those are some of the reasons why I said to myself, look, I mean, um, perhaps one day, someone somewhere 
will be willing to join me and be able to really uh, learn from what I've been doing over the years and up to so far. I mean, I've been doing this for the last 30 years. I know no one, you know, even the students that I taught, you know, who are willing to say, look, I want to visit you at my studio. I want you to mentor me. Um, but instead, you know, they want to ask me questions. They want to ask me, you know, how did you start? You know, why do, why do you do this? I mean, teach me painting and so on. Something that is completely outside of what I'm, I'm interested in. So, you know, those are the things that sometimes, you know, they pull me down a little bit um, with regards to me trying to really pursue young people to go out there and, and realize that the world is so big, you know, for them to be able to go out there and explore. Incredible, because it can't be easy for, for artists, especially young upcoming ones. It's not an easy journey. You know, art is a very expensive career. Very, very expensive. I mean, um, and, and don't expect rewards immediately. You know, I mean, for you to become an established artist, you know, you need to really work on your craft, you know, and make sure that you practice as much as you possibly can. But I mean, a young person, would not realize that, you know, because, you know, the, the, because of social media, because of, uh, you know, popular culture, television and so on. Hip hop also contributes because, you know, hip hop artists, they say, oh, no, I know my friend is a hip hop artist, you know, we're together at school. Now he's making his own money. But I'm an artist, you know, I'm trying to be a painter, you know, I'm struggling. So those are the things that actually come um, uh, in a way of those who are willing to become visual artist one day, you know, because they see um, art as a way of making quick money. It's, it's not the case. You know, you have to labor, you have to invest your time, you have, to, you have to be passionate and love what you do. Talk to me about growing up in rural KZN. What was it like? And did you always know that you're going to be an artist, a successful one at that? Sure. It, it never crossed my mind. I, I, I never thought I would ever be able to become what I thought I wanted to be. And, and for that matter, in fact, art wasn't considered as a career, I think, at the time. Um, the only thing I knew was that I could, I could do some very nice cows using clay. Um, but, you know, with regards to drawings, you know, I was helping uh, classmates quite a lot at school, you know, up to a, a point where I was told, look, stop doing this, you know, because it actually deprives other, other students to uh, do stuff for, the, for themselves, you know. For me, uh, it was being, it was funny, you know, to hear someone saying that because what's wrong with me helping the next child next to me, you know? <laughs> so, um, so those are the things that really made my life to be interesting at the time. But um, in general, you know, growing up uh, in the rural Newcastle it was a fantastic experience. And it actually, it brought me to a point where, you know, when I moved to uh, Johannesburg, you know, I had this balanced life, you know, where I have a taste of, of rural life and an urban setting, you know, and, and it made me a stronger person, you know, because at least, you know, I'm all rounded, you know, I, I know what it means, you know, to chase cows and to head cattle and, uh, and, and, you know, to be in these big cities like Johannesburg, you know, it's completely different to where I'm coming from, you know. So uh, for me, it, it's very, very interesting and I'm so happy I've been to that position in the past, even though it wasn't a comfortable one, but I'm happy I was there. So you were happy running around the cattle and that obviously shaped your character and yes. who you are today? Yes. Yeah, but look, I mean, there's also a, 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 another side of it, you know, where you know, as a young man, young boy, heading cattle, you, 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 you develop this attachment, you know, to these animals. Um, and at some point, you know, they die, you know, and I didn't know, we didn't know, you know, what killed some of them, you know, up to a point where later on, maybe when we open them, dissect them, we realize that, oh my goodness, you know, the, the, the belly is full of plastics, you know. And that connection of plastics for me, it came back later in my life. And I didn't know, and I didn't understand that, oh, maybe at some point it, it brings me back to where my life started, you know, one way or the other. You know, maybe that's why I have this attachment, you know, with, with this material. And I, I think um, that's the reason why I, I want to do something about it, to save animals to save the world you know so how did it all start how did how did this 
passion for your medium that you use and the passion of creating art in this way? How did it all start? I think the simplest way to describe that was um, the reason why I went into plastics was lack of resources. I had no money to buy paints and, and all of that, you know, but um, I still wanted to pursue the dream, you know, of becoming an artist one day. And in fact, whilst I'm still there, I need to mention that one of the artists, you know, that really made me to realize that one can really go far, you know, with very little is Willie Bester from Cape Town. I remember we were taken to one of his exhibition at the Goodman Gallery. Um, and when we went there, I, I realized that, look, this man is using tins, uh, paper, plastic, whatever, you know, he could lay his hands on. And the show was a sold out. And I started to say, look, if this man can do it, so am I. You know, I mean, this man is all the way from Cape Town. He uses literally, literally rubbish, you know, and people are willing to buy it, you know. Let me find a way, but not really following or copying what Willie is doing. I want to be my own man, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I started to really dig deep and, 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 and making sure that wherever I go, I open up my mind as, as, as much as I possibly could. That's and, and it worked. That's, that's really incredible that you... You saw that and yep. something in you was ignited yep. and, and something was started and, yep. look, and look where we are today. I remember a few years ago um, being invited to the city of Oceanside in California mm -hmm. to something that they have annually. It's called um, the Green Week. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all focused around environment, preserving mm -hmm. the environment. Mm -hmm. And I remember the artists in, in this city of Oceanside they use a lot of waste. Mm. Um, some of them even go out to sea to look at what has been washed out by mm. the sea and collect and use that mm. to create their art. And I remember looking at this and all these artists just engaged in this mm. medium and um, it's not such a foreign thing for them. Mm. Is this something that you want to see? Um, is, is this something you want to see here at home with our artists? Do you want to see more of this, more artists using waste to create art? To be honest, I'll be very happy um, um, to see artists trying to break away from the traditional way of making art. Because for me, there's very little to explore there. You know, I mean, uh, for instance, with oil paints, I mean, it's the medium that has been explored 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing new that I think you can possibly come up with and, and wows us. You know, I mean, we've seen it all. Yeah. Um, so hence, I think if we try to break away from that and look for something new, fresh ideas, you know, things that will really bring people into our, our, our work as artists and, and start to appreciate it even more and say, look, artists are now a group of people who try to, th to think different. You know, we, we are the mirror of the society. You know, we, we reflect on what is happening around us. You know, and I mean, and, and, and partly we are role models in our small way, you know, and ambassadors for that matter. So that is why it is always important for us to keep moving, you know, as much as we possibly could. So that at least those who come uh, uh, behind us would, would, would find a way of saying, this man was doing this, you know, I've learned so much from him. I think it's about time that I break away from what he's doing and create a new way of making art. Because art really is such an important thing to, to have in any society. Absolutely. And as you mentioned before, that um, uh, art, being an artist is very expensive. Yeah. Creating art, is, is, it's an expensive career. If it's a hobby, it's an expensive hobby. But still, most artists would rather pick up a brush, a can of paint, and, and, and do what you know they already know. Do you have a special attachment to, to plastic and maybe is that why you chose this medium? Look, I mean, um, as I said that, you know, plastic, um, uh, it takes me back to, you know, the times where, when I was heading cattle, cattle dying. Um, it takes me back to um, uh, Funda Center where I struggled with materials and money to buy paints. So, you know, when I look at this material, I'm now beginning to see the world in a, in a completely different way. And, and, and 
What people need to understand as well, that if you buy expensive paints as an artist, that doesn't necessarily guarantee a good, you know, a, 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 a successful work of art. It doesn't, you know. It says that, look, we have money to buy these expensive brushes, but really the content of what you are trying to express comes anywhere, nowhere near what plastics could do, you know. So this is what I'm trying to push, to say, look, one needs to find some kind of a niche or some kind of his own language, you know, to express and be able to be understood by the world out there. And I mean, I've forced people to understand my language Absolutely. over the years. We, we just hope that, you know, more artists, especially the young ones, um, mm. like this week at the exhibition, there were so many young artists mm. and it was just so beautiful to watch how they were so intrigued mm. and wanting to learn mm. and asking you questions afterwards. We mm. just, um, we mm. hope that they, some of them learn this medium and actually uses it to express themselves in the, in the art that they create. No, but look, I think, I think also we have responsibility. I have a responsibility myself. You know, I mean, to go out there and make sure that, you know, I, I meet them halfway. You know, one cannot expect that because, you know, I've done this so much uh, uh, for over the years and therefore I'm a star. I'm not a star. My name is Mbongeni Butelezi. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a person who is willing to be with other people. You know, I mean, I cannot really pretend as if I'm a superstar whereas I'm not. I think somehow this is where it becomes a problem to some young artists to say, how do I approach this man? You know, for me to be able to learn from what he's doing. You know, we are unapproachable at some point. I think we must accept that, that, that point. It's a fact. You know, some of us are, you know, have these big egos, you know, and uh, they pretend as if the world is owing them something, you know, or anything. I don't know. I mean, maybe this is just my own way of looking at it. But I've always believed that, you know, if you stay down, um, you, 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 you become um, at the level where other people are, then you can begin to exchange ideas and learn from other people. Because, you know, if I talk to a young artist asking me questions, I am not just throwing or pouring information into an empty vessel. Mm. It's a human being who can independently think, you know, and who cannot just suck and absorb all what I'm saying because wow. I'm Bongeni Buchelezi, you know. I must, I must try to give the space for, 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 for a person to think and accept and choose what he think is the best from what I've told him, you know? I, I think that's very, very important. I mean, the angle that I've always looked at is respect another person. Remember that he or she can think, mm -hmm. maybe better than you do, you know? So th that's where I've, I've always tried to place myself, you know, sort of in between. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it helps me quite a lot. And that's what I've enjoyed with just watching your journey is that, you. you know, you've got so much success with, with what you've created you. and your work is sought after globally, you. but you still carry on with this humility and grace. And it's just so beautiful to see that um, today, which we don't get to see a lot of. Mm -hmm. And um, with the socio uh, <coughs> politics of the world, the environment, the environmental issue, issues of abuse. Mm. Um, how do you stay motivated and inspired? Um, do these things inspire you at all to create some of your pieces or to create some of the collections that you have? How do you how do you stay how do you stay inspired? Or do you sometimes use some of the your your art to express what's happening or to even confront? Um, what's happening around us? Oh yes, most definitely. You know, look, I mean, I, I always believe that um, art is a language on its own. Art is a tool that we must use to communicate as human beings, be it negative or positive. But there must be something, that, a story that we, we want to tell with our work. Um, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm a believer that, you know, I, I, I cannot produce the type of art that will be meshed with the curtains, you know, with the couches, you know. I mean, uh, I don't want to create an object, you know, that, that is meaningless rather than a color that, that matches with the carpet, you know, in my house. You know, I want to 
um, um, send a message to whosoever is looking at my work. You know, try to evoke emotions, try to make people think and make them um, understand that, you know, you are trying to bring a certain message to the world out there. I mean, I'll give you a typical example. Um, it, it's a pity the work is not part of the exhibition, but I think um, it's important to mention that. You know, there's a story that touched me so much um, uh, of a young man in Limpopo by the name of Michael Komape, who died at school. Michael was six years old when he went, when he started at that, at that particular school. Only two weeks at school when he fell into a toilet pit. And I, 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 I read the story, I, I, I listened to some people, uh, you know, talking about it, but I just said to myself, after talking and listening, what happens afterwards? You know, I, I, I wanted something that will, that will be there and, and preserve the memory of Michael. You know, hence I, I, I decided to, you know, pro start working around an artwork um, um, as a tribute to Michael Komape. You know, to say, look, you know, I mean, there's so much to be done um, with regards to our education in South Africa. You know, there's so much that still needs to be done with regards to the, um, uh, you know, health hygiene situation at school in South Africa. So, I mean, if we don't do anything, we just keep talking. I'm one person who doesn't prefer to talk. I'm not a good talker, you know. I mean, God has made me to, to be able to at least um, uh, to create something that will, that, that, will be, that will act like a bridge between me and, and, and the person next to me. That is my art, you know. So, you know, with this artwork, I, I tried to bring up the message um, to the world to say, look, this needs to be sorted out. Someone is responsible for this mess. Yeah. Someone must take the blame for this at some point, you know. So these are the type of work that I always want to produce. I mean, each and every artwork that I, 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 I conceptualize, that I work on, it is based on a certain story. It is based on, on something that, that, that touched me one way or the other, you know. Like I say, that I don't want to do stuff that reflects my curtains because they are red, therefore an artwork must have a bit of red somewhere. It's an object that says nothing to me. Yes. I don't appreciate that. Yeah, that story is uh, very compelling indeed. And mm. you know, um, every artist has a role to play in the development and the health of a society. Mm. And um, you as an artist, you know, you bring us joy, mm. you help us to interact with the world, and we see the world through your lens um, with the work that, that you do as an artist or many other artists mm. as well. Um, but sometimes um, artists use their work to confront a situation mm. like the one that you've that you've just shared yes. of the of the young life that was lost yes. due to the environment that he was in. Mm. Would you like to see more meaningful art being displayed and portrayed um, in, 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 in our society and less of what you mentioned of maybe fitting into my deco, but something more that is confronting a real situation, maybe a situation of abuse, a situation of inequality. Is that what you, you want to see more of? You see, that's my dream, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming about that every day. In a way, we confront the challenges that the world is facing. You know, we've got so many challenges in this world. You know, and I believe that if we can all try to make that small change, in whichever way, I'm sure you know we will, we will have a better space for all of us to live in. I mean, um, it, it's it's it, you know, it, artists sometimes artists sometimes are funny people. You know, we are strange people. You know, because if 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 we don't make sales some of us get discouraged. 
You know, we, we, we tend to think that, oh, it means my art doesn't mean anything, you know, to the world. It's not like that, you know. So that is why I believe that if we go out there, we find new ways of making art, we can better confront the situation that the world is facing today. You know, that is why I'm, I'm one of the artists that tends not to, you know, I've had artists talking about uh, my identity, you know, my identity, my work is about my identity. Who am I in this whole world to focus only on myself? Mm. I'm nothing, you know? The world is too big and the world has got so many challenges that we need to confront and make sure that we, we correct some of the wrongs that are there for all to see, you know? Yeah. Not as an individual, you know? So I think, you know, if, if we can try to break away from, from the traditional way of doing things, you know, and, and we are too polite sometimes, we are too nice, you know? We are too, too, too nice and we, we want to be accepted by everyone, you know? So that is why, not in a bad way, that is why I, um, I've never received any form of funding from the state. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, once I get funding from the state, mm -hmm. or I get supported by the government to do my art, it will be stupid of me to critique those people mm -hmm. if there is anything that they are doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I have no space to critique them. I critique you now, I send you a WhatsApp in the evening to ask for money. It, does, it just doesn't make sense, you know? You know, we need to try and make them understand because we are their eyes on the ground. Mm -hmm. Artists are on the ground. Artists are people are supposed to be on the ground where people are. We are not superstars. Mm -hmm. We are not superstars, you know? Once you have that, that, that negative, for me, it's a negative energy of you being the best, of you being the most important artist, mm. you have lost it. Absolutely. Because you, you divorce yourself from where the real people are. Absolutely. The real people are on the ground. And challenges that the world is facing is, is, is on the ground, you know? So I, I, that is why sometimes, you know, when I try to explain my work to some people, <clears throat> I, I make a reference with two things global warming and, 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 and the pandemic, that is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. When are we going to find a way of, of working together as humankind, as human beings, as, as, as people? Not necessarily because you are black, you are green, you are yellow, you are purple. Yeah. No, as human beings. When are we going to confront issues as, as, as a unit? COVID tried that, to do that, mm -hmm. to actually bring us together. So I believe global warming must do the same. Mm -hmm. We can do the same to global warming because it's something that doesn't know any color of your skin. Yeah. It doesn't know your affiliation, uh, religion affiliation. It doesn't know anything about you. Mm -hmm. Possibly, if we can start there and understand how working together looks like, we can start to work things backwards we can now look at things like peace. Yes. We can look at things like hunger in the world. Yes. We can look at so many challenges that we are confronted with as human beings on earth. Yes. But as long as we, do, we, we can't find a spot where we can say, let's all come together here and start move forward as, as a unit, we'll remain like this forever. Nothing will ever change, I think, in my view. So that is why I believe art um, is, is the only way that could possibly open people's eyes to realize that, you know, after the pandemic, global warming will hit us. Yeah. Well, it's already started. It's, it's here. Yeah. It's yeah. here. So, I mean, why can't we realize that, okay, fine, perhaps maybe, you know, the pandemic has gave us that foundation of some sort. Mm -hmm. Let's now jump onto other things and maintain that, that unit. Unity. You know, so that we can discover more things, more challenges, try to resolve them and move forward as human beings. This, this is just my thinking. Wow. Mm. I'm so excited about your collaboration with Nestle.
Mm-hmm. Earlier this year, Nestle announced their switch to 100% recycled paper for their packaging. Mm. And they've gone into collaboration with yourself where you create these fun origamis where families can mm. do together with their kids. And obviously, as a mom of a toddler and a young child, I absolutely love that idea. Thank you. How did this come about and how has this collaboration been going with Nestle? Sure. Uh, I mean, that was that was a an honor, you know, to be approached by such a big brand like Nestle Smarties, you know. Um, from what they told me, they said, look, they've been looking for an artist that um, works with recycling. And uh, luckily they decided to choose me, you know, to actually experiment uh, with this packaging, you know, and see what one could possibly do. But, you know, the brief was saying to me, do something with the with the packaging, you know, and see how far you can possibly go. And when I think of Smarties, I just saw these colors and children, you know, it's it's colorful, nice taste, and, and so on. And I just thought that maybe I needed to create something like origamis, mm. you know, because the whole paper, you know, it's actually very clever. Whosoever designed that packaging was was you know had was clear in his mind or her mind to say, look, I want this to be used in a form of origami. You know, they didn't tell me anything about origami, but I looked at the shape. You can't do any origami if, if, if the paper is not square. So it's a square shaped paper um, that, that you can go very far with it. So what I did, because it was also an activation, you know, of the, um, of the, of the product. I thought of doing quite a couple of origamis, you know, for, you know, something that is functional, you know, that ch- children will actually play with. That was number one. And number two, I also felt that maybe I needed to break away a little bit, you know, and become, you know, more serious about it, you know, and, and do a, a more collage, you know, type of work. Um, but because of time, you know, I was also planning to even take it further, you know, and do a bit something like like a small sculpture, you know, without using any any form of paint or something. But it all ended up when I did that two-dimensional piece, a portrait of a boy, um, you know, just to extend it or to take it slightly further with regards to how this paper, the possibilities, if one were to put it, uh, that way, that were there, you know, with this material, and for me, it was such, it was such a, it was fun all the way, you know, from start to finish, and I couldn't believe that I was chosen, you know, to be one who, who, do all these things, you know. It's it's such a great honor. I, I love that, that, that project. Was absolutely, it was incredible. wonderful, and it, it looked very fun as well. It was lots of fun, though, you know, um, the way few challenges you know when I was supposed to present it because you know as an artist sometimes you can't sit in front of camera all the time you know so they wanted me to explain things and and, and dance and do all of that and you know my legs cannot <laughs> do that anymore but it was fun all the way working with children that's amazing and it's been so good to see some collaborations that have been taking place mm. with some really big and established brands yes. with some of our local mm. artists and some some local talent Yes. Do you think that um, African artists are on a rise, or do we still have a long way to go? Look, I'll, 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 be, I'll be honest with you. Um, um, this continent has a huge potential, this continent. You know, if we can handle things carefully um, and, 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 and be sober-minded, um, you know, I'm sure we can, we can actually go very far. You know, Africa is now beginning to take its position in the world with regards to to the arts, you know. And I so wish that these things can happen quite often, you know, where um, South African, Southern African, African artists are invited, you know, in in, 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 in Europe, in America, in, you know, overseas, let me just put it that way. So that we actually learn a bit from what other people are doing in their part of the world. Um, we bring that here, we, 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 we put it together with what we know already, mm. you know, to be able to build a new wave of African artists, you know, with a different vision. Uh, I'm sure we will, you know, no continent will ever stand 
stand up for Africa. You know, we've got so much talent in Africa, not only in visual arts, you know, in other arts uh, like music and, 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 and you name it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, we're still lacking maybe a bit here and there with regards to responsibilities you know some of us are not responsible enough you know i'm not saying i'm i'm, I'm perfect i'm responsible but you know what i've picked up is that some artists some of us are not really responsible enough in terms of taking their careers serious you know mm -hmm. you must know that if you become an artist number one you are not going to be a millionaire I, w I came into this career knowing too well mm -hmm. that I am not going to be a billionaire, you know. And I didn't want, I didn't actually do art because I wanted to be a star, you know. I, I wanted to do art because I wanted to share some of my inner e feelings and emotions with the world out there. The world will decide, not me. So I think, you know, there, there is that balance that we still need to create um, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, fame, money, um, uh, social responsibilities, and, and how we address these things, you know. But in general, I mean, I honestly see so many young up-and-coming artists, you know, who are doing so well, even though some of them go to Europe and come back changed people, um, it's fine. But, you know, it does show that, you know, we are on our way to somewhere. Yeah. Let me just say, yes, we are somewhere now. And I mean, what would you say to an artist out there, maybe young, talented, but no opportunity, no means? Because we know that talent alone can only get mm. you so far. Yes. What would you say to, to someone in that position? How would you encourage them? Look, I think th th there's a difference here. You know, there are people who are talented, but lazy to work. There are people who are hard workers and work themselves up and become noticed. So I think, you know, that's where sometimes we also need to understand that, okay, this young man is talented, but he just doesn't know where to go. He needs some kind of assistance. He does work hard. However, some artists are extremely talented, but the fact that, you know, this talent thing has gone into their heads, you know, they fail to understand that you must complement that with hard work mm. and respect. I tell artists all the time, especially young artists, that look, if you want to become a successful artist, there are quite a few things that you must understand for yourself. Respect is one of them. Mm. Taking care of any person next to you mm. is another. You must know you have got parents. If you can pull all these things together and package them properly, there's no room for failure. You cannot fail. Because you, you have embraced things that make a human being to be successful or to be who you are. But you know, there are people that I know who have, who have everything, who have it all, but they don't respect other people. For me, they, those people, they, they don't mean much to me. I don't care, mm -hmm. you know? And some of them are, not as talented, but you know, they are trying to position themselves in such a manner that they fully understand that I must work hard mm. to achieve my goal. Mm. And they've had the opportunities. Exactly, and opportunities just come their way, you know. So those are the things that I think maybe if we can begin to understand as artists, especially young artists, if they can understand that, you know, an artist is not something that just comes overnight, mm. you know. Yes, you were born gifted, talented, and all of that. But you must still understand there is so much to learn along the way, yeah. you know? So that's where, you know, the element of respect, the element of knowing that you are with other people in this world. Mm -hmm. You are not alone, you know? So as you go along, you, 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 you learn these things, you embrace them, you, 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 you respect people, and then, you know, gradually things will begin to come together for you. And eventually success is right at your doorstep. You, you, that success will chase you if you have these things and properly packaged. No one will ever beat you. Yeah. And thank you so much for that, you know, that advice. I don't think it only goes to artists, it just goes to us 
as human beings in general. Thank you. And I know that you don't say this these words um, loosely because you are not a stranger to hard work, determination, and um, lack of challenges. Mm -hmm. You have not come to this space by chance or mm -hmm. just opportunities being thrown at you, but because you are hardworking, because you are humble, mm -hmm. because you. you respect the person next to you, that is you. just such an incredible piece of advice. Thank you. Mbongeni Butelezi, <laughs> son of the soil. It's been such an incredible time with you and I wish we could carry on this wonderful conversation, but thank you so much for your time and just sharing of your, yourself and your journeys and the lessons that you've learned. Thank you so much for, for having me. I mean, in fact, it's, it's a great opportunity because like I say that, you know, I'm one person who sometimes become, uh, I become a bit nervous, um, you know, because I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm used to be at my studio and do my work. You know, and my work, I believe, speaks for itself. Absolutely. But uh, I know that it's not enough. You know, I have to add a few words, you know, to make it really understandable to the world out there. And this opportunity offered to me by the Pencil uh, Club and the Pencil Foundation, it is something that is um, very big to me, that I'll never forget, um, that I appreciate, and I thank everyone who made it happen and who made it possible and thank you so much thank you so much thank you. well there you have it a wonderful discussion <laughs> conversation with Mbongeni Butelezi as he shares his life's journey I really hope that this episode has inspired you as much as it has inspired me catch us next week on the next episode of Impact Africa I'm Sam Ace and good evening <laughs>